Martin from Secret, the channel for learning about trading and investing. Welcome to Markets Tomorrow, the daily market uh, technical analysis show. We will look at what happened in the stock markets during the day and how we can plan for a better trade for the next day. Right? So we had um, we had a weak you know, market uh, performance that you saw. Both indices uh, you know, were forming bearish candles with uh, ending a flat. Right? And it was an expiry day. So let's see, see the details on you know, what exactly happened today and what you can learn from that and plan for the next day, right? So as the pre-market analysis is for May 6th, Friday, 2022, and it's based on all these parameters that you see on the screen, right? We would have additional uh, uh, analysis on data also. You know, we'll look at uh, global commodities and USDINR and currencies and FID, about mission, all, all of these things, right? We'll wrap up some actionables as well. So, look at the candle. So, we are exactly where we are. So, we attempted to move up and uh, we ended up in the inside bar within a very long bearish 400 point previous candle, right? Same with Bangalore also. We attempted to move up but caught up in the resistance and then ended up where we were yesterday. Same. So it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of support zone and there is a possibility of a bounce from here, right? Both places, it could it, it could, it could be possible, right? But the attempt did happen today. It gapped up and then only it uh, uh, gave away to the setting pressure. So it's a flat day, so just find four, five points up Nifty and 32 points down on Bank Nifty. That's hardly, you no, know, just nothing much happened. So we ended up with here. And uh, no, we had lost all the moving average supports right earlier and we had fallen down below the into the channel from where we had broken out our gear trend line channel, right? Bank Nifty also the same, we have broken out, did not sustain, fall down into the channel zone, right? So it's a failed breakout that has happened, the breakout uh, that did not sustain, right? And um, uh, intraday price action, if you see, this is how it looks like, right? Gapped up. And then uh, went little further, around 1% of gap happened on both indices. And then further went a little bit more, and then it was trending down line. Down, down, down trend is what you can see in both indices, right? So, actually, it was expiry day. We did not move down, we ended flat. So, still there is a hope. But uh, look at the Bollinger Bands. It's clearly showing the band expansion on the downside in both indices. And it's very far away from the median or the moving average 20. So there is bearishness that is evident, but overall there is consolidation if you look at above the indices. It's still in the consideration. The spill out does not have really happen, but the expansion has happened. So there is a likelihood it can create another swing low down here at uh, below the 15, uh, you no know, 500 kind of zones and uh, you no know, 32 kind of uh, 32 500 kind of levels on the bank nifty. So that swing low. Looks like it's heading towards that, looking at the expansion of the Bollinger Bands. Right? It will be volatile because the distance from the median is very far, so this high volatile moves uh, you know, will always be there. Let's look at the support resistance levels and uh, 16700, 16750 seems to be, uh, you know, seems to be a zone where we have the support. We have resistance basically there at 700, so it had fallen down. Support really is at 550, 650. You no, know, 16, 6, 550, 650 is where the support starts. So 16, 750 is a short term uh, resistance that you have to climb, and then above that you have 16, 800, 900, which is from 38. That's resistance two. Then you have 17,000 rounding number resistance, and then above that 17,200 to 300. Then 17,350 to 400. That's resistance, and above that you have 17,500 to 17,600. That's from 923,000 retracement levels. So that's the resistance of upside supports. As I said, 16, 550, 650. That's where it is right now. Then, if that breaks in 16350, 50 is a major resistance, 50 retracement level, it also has a gap support also. If that breaks in, you go to 16260, then 15950, 61. So, 15950, 15850, that zone is 15961 is very crucial. And then it falls down to the previous swing low. So, the lower low that is formed, and that would be the major zone. And that breaks, then you have clear bearishness that is there now. Bank Nifty's charts again. I'm not able to clearly see, and so I'm going back to the charts and look at this. 
So if I support would be 35,000, 35,300 levels. If that breaks in 34, 350, 34, 750 levels, that breaks we have a zone where there is a good support of 34,000 levels, Fibonacci 61 retracement level also that is. So this zone is very crucial. That breaks when you go to the 32,400, 32,800 zones and that would be very near to the previous swing low, lower low that was formed earlier. No, that is beyond that it will be clear bearishness. Western upside would be 35, 600, 35, 900 levels and above that 36, 300, 36, 800 which is the Fibonacci 38 retracement levels. Above that you have a gap persistence which is at 36, 900, 37,100 levels between that so. So 37, 500 Fibonacci 23 retracement level a close above that would really mean that you know we probably may not be ready to go down. Then comes 37, 700, 800 zone and then 38,000 levels and above that 38, 500 levels and then 38, 9, 39, thousand and thirty nine four hundred levels on the upside that would be about the thirty nine four hundred is on the upside swing no low, lower high would be broken from there so thirty nine four hundred is above and thirty four thousand has to be you know, looked at and then the swing low of near to the thirty two thousand levels right so these are the levels let's get back to the slides so it's not clearly visible on my uh, slides so that's why I moved there so moving to the momentum and the divergences, you can see that it's a it's a flat moving some momentum basically today. But it still remained, it was about to climb, it almost climbed and then ended up still being the beer response on the nifty and the bank nifty on the short term daily charts. That's what you see a bank nifty also. Right? It's it's neither bearish nor sideways. So it was coming, but no, it continued to be in the bearish zones basically. The momentum is flat uh, and in the bear zones. And if you also momentum is flat in various zones and medium term if you look that is sideways still on both the indices. Trend continues to be bearish and bearishness with slight increase you know with an upward move about 20. You know, this green one is the IDX strength of the trend. Strength of the trend is increasing that is bearishness is increasing so short term and medium term both the trends of both indices are bearish. Volatility yesterday it spiked up today it cooled off so you know, yesterday 8 percent up today nearly 8 percent down so back to 20.29 levels right. so implied volatility of nifty is 20.16 Implied volatility percentage is also at high but it has cooled up from 85 to 80 kind of levels so weeks about 20 remaining there and then trying to move up 22 and again 20 and not ready to fall to the 15 kind of levels would mean that you have to be cautious the market will be very choppy that's exactly what is happening now the open interest analysis that you see here as of now today is a Thursday and expiry day and next expiry is going to get traded from tomorrow so today so looking at May 12th expiries open interest data would not be very much relevant but still for reference like I am mentioning that 15 more hundred and seventeen thousand is by the highest put and call writing is there 16,000 is by the highest put and call level second level is there um, 34,000 and uh, 36,000 is the highest oh, highest um, uh, put and call writing support and resistance is seen. Then 35,000 and 37,000 is the highest put and uh, put and uh, uh, call second level of support and resistance is seen. Before that, let me just say I have a doubt on the put call ratio. I'm just going there and seeing once again. So this is for the 12th May expiry. You can see that the put call ratio is for eight. That's right. Just wanted to cross check the this mistake. 0 0.43 is mentioned here. Actually, it is 0 0.48. Let me double check the bank nifty also. 5 8. That's right. So I'm looking back. So so nifty is bearish on the put call ratio 0 0.48. It's not 43. So in 48. 0 0.58 is also very close to bearishness in the bank nifty. And uh, I just wanted to confirm the open interest build up also to exactly what happened was clearly short build up and it's a long one winding that is having this mistake there also I did not check this part so this is a long one winding has happened on the bank nifty and uh, short build up is what has happened on the uh, so make a note of this correction right so futures open interest is showing long one winding long winding is basically bearish necessarily short build up is clearly short you know shorting that is happening in nifty and 0.48 is close. So overall put call ratio and the futures open interest build up is clearly saying there is bearishness. 
other data is not relevant because it's a weekly expiry that is starting to actively get traded from tomorrow only but still the levels are bearish in nature because more number of call writing is what you see there in both the graphs now look at this heat map we are seeing that IT performed you know, kind of recovery may be happening but otherwise all the sectors are flat ICIC and HDFC are done, Godak is doing good okay. overall the major sector of FMCG, IT, you know, FMCG and financial services did not do well Farm also did not do well what did well was IT and not auto and metals you know, which were beaten back the other day so the main thing is the banking stocks that did not perform that was weak basically sector wise if you see Let's look at a quick view at the index we wait once again. HFC Bank and CRED at the support consolidating, trying to maintain the momentum in the sideways itself. HFC Bank, HDFC also similarly a red candle, which is already slipped from the major support zone down, and the momentum is trying to remain in the sideways zone. Trend is already so overall there is it is consolidating this and trying to come up at the support level is what you can see for the HFC trends in the index we wait. Lions. I think there is some result that's coming and it was kind of some profit booking and sell-off has happened and is getting something from the fundamental side that we don't know. We don't need to know also, but basically the momentum has slipped from the bullish zones. Probably this is an opportunity to buy some during this retracement, right? With cautiously. So the support zones are very clear. The neckline of the breakout, right? The channel top, trend line channel top from where the breakout happened. There will be the zones where we had to turn back into bearishness. Right? Other than it should be opportunity to buy but basically the sideways and trend crossover has happened from the last two days of performance momentum is sideways still from the bullish zones you know, lens was holding the market like anything but so many days but now things are going to be different so IT is showing green just trying to climb back INFI is showing green mm -hmm. uh, and TG is also showing some green so basically they are trying to climb back and maintain themselves in the sideways zone uh, no, earlier it had gone, the momentum had gone to the bear zones and just trying to climb up and get in, get their place in the sideways moment is what I can see. But from up for Infi, there is a major gap resistance is there, overcoming that would be the main thing. So clearly a gap can be seen here. TCS has got good support downside, you know, where it had it was tested multiple times, probably it may dip there and then bounce up. Right? Basically it's trying to maintain itself from into the trend line channel is what you can see but sir, momentum is sideways as you know this year so it gains probably may be considered it in trying to come up it is bank continue to show the bearishness today also right momentum has gone to the you know support rsi 40 kind of levels there is a chance that it can take a support here and then bounce so it's possible but uh, the neckline of the ascending triangle break code that happened months before here maybe the next support now so I see the bank which is trending up more and they're trying you know, to move up and make move up and make uh, new highs has basically essentially retraced and given up the uh, major support zone and seems like it is heading back to where it started you no know, at this blue line ascending triangle breakout zone momentum is right as of now it's sideways not at bearish you know what you have to closely watch is whether it's going to take a support near this RSI 40 levels and then slowly trying to move up or not whether the retracement ends here or not is what you have to closely watch on before we take a long bets black bank seems to be performing good green momentum is rising and then it's in the sideways not at bullish but it's at a critical resistance zone where it had failed three four times earlier now we have to see whether it is going to move up to the next resistance on the top line but all, all sideways momentum and price in the median term is kind of consolidating zigzag moving down up down down so it's kind of no no trending moves are there definitely but no there is an attempt of consolidation and bounce up that is there and no now it's a crucial zone where it can give up or it can break out and then move further up okay? because already it has done that multiple times so keep a close watch on Kodak Kodak was performing today overall if you see so index heavyweights that's a show yeah. none of the stocks are performing you know they are trying to consolidate keep the support levels make sideways movement recover from the bearishness is all what you see right uh, yeah that's more right so sector performance if you see it so it was mixed day you know some of the sectors are up it was up two percent up right 0.6 percent up metal metal and it up what also up 0.4 percent but otherwise it is pharma fmcg and reality in down days overall it continue to be in the bearish zone, bearish zone since spite of the two percent up move that happened right 
and so is pharma is also remain short term bearishness reality also remains bearishness so fmcg auto and metal is what sideways short term momentum can be seen so um, there is no way that we can pick up stocks because none of them are strong enough no sideways is not enough at least in the short term you should have some bullishness before you can think of getting in this is lacking momentum is basically what is happening right in social participation data does not come in i'll just refresh and see whether it has come in or not no so we had Yesterday also 3,000 crores in day for us nearly 2,000 crores in cash selling by the FA. All the DAs are buying. That's not good enough. Today also big selling that might have happened. That caused the reversal of the up move. No, leading it to a downtrend after it attempted to do that in the morning must have been uh, indicating that FA sold today also. No, no, the data is not coming. So after that, it will be clear. So moving to the USD INR, you can see that there is some cool off that has happened. Due to RBA intervention or something, but still it's above 76, 76.25. How about we sideways for the USD INR? Now look at the dollar index. If that has also cooled off after hitting the major all-time, five-year time, all-time time, five five-year high of uh, 103 plus levels, and then it, the momentum is still in the bullish zones, and then probably it may take slip a little more and take a support before bouncing in further up move. No, so dollar. Seems to have cooled off. USD and our rupee also gained a little bit today, but overall it is still remain both are at the very high level, which is not that great for these markets. Global indices, if you see US markets uh, have recovered. Dow Jones has made 900 point kind of move up move yesterday, and it has now climbed back to the support zone once again. And this zone where it is right now, you no, know, clearly moved above that is indicating that you no, know, the US market is also having enough strength and not ready to. It's still a bull market, is what it indicates. No, you, you, know, you can see that it this level has tested you no know, multiple times. At least one, two, three, four, you know, at least fifteen times of testing can be seen here on the Dow Jones. Same in the case of Nasdaq also, a bounce up can be seen from yesterday's candle, and uh, as in B five hundred also is trying to recover, and then it's almost recovered from where, from the support zones or from where it had fallen off. Momentum also is now clearly in the sideways after it had. Fall into the bearish zones of momentum. So, all the recovery is small in the short term is happening in the US markets, which is good. So, you'll have to clean your close watch tomorrow you know, before the pre market and then link it to a picture. What's the plan? So, crude oil is uh, again spiking up above 107 kind of level and momentum is rising still in the sideways but heading high into the bullish zone. So, it has been consolidating. You can see that there is some. There's a big you know, up move and then the strength is reduced then further reduced so this is kind of volatility skews that is happening and then you no know, uh, so that could mean uh, you no know, it can it can bust out in either of the sides right? you know no what side but clearly on the upside is where the possibility is there because uh, it's not ready to go down below the hundred you no know, there's not just in more than a few days below hundred so. Um, which is not great. Momentum is rising and crude is uh, shooting up above 100 and, main, and remains there for long. It's not that great for our markets. Coal seems to be not ready to go down and take the next support. Instead, it is climbing back and then trying to stay on the support zone. Momentum has had fallen into the bearish zones yesterday and last few days, and but it has successfully climbed into the bullish into the sideways zone now. So that is something that you see. So it's not ready to get back in the channel and then. Fall down so don't worry, it had a, a two times attempt to make an all time high earlier, which had failed, and now seems like it may be consolidating at this song ahead. So it's a sideways price action, very slow sideways price action that was happening since long and had uh, turned bearish after long several weeks. And now you know, that consolidation seems to be, uh, seems to be something that may. No, continue for a long time now. That's about gold and uh, two actionables by Jazz Finance is a short trade. The channel, trend line channel where the price was moving around has blocked the support zone and would give a clean swing trade down till 5849 levels where it may find some support and if you trail it you can take good downside trade. No momentum is that the is a weekly charts. So the week is over by tomorrow. So probably Monday could give a trade if the price is not taking a support on a weekly basis or you know, trade has been taken on a, uh, 
there is every chance that the price in the moment again slip down daily is already slipped in the bearish zones um, trend also is bearish and rising so price action also is clearly showing some kind of trended channel within that trend line channel down and up no down move so the main trend line is already you know uh, become valid mostly right so it can give good some trade bajaj finance by itself is good but you no know, the market uh, overall but is correcting it corrects a lot so you can see a lot of supports are there downside so you have to be cautious when you're shorting right and same is the case of ultra tech cement that is also seems like there is a change in priority reverse you no know, bearish change in priority action maybe happening and it also has got supports so you have to trade the stop losses momentum uh, charts are on the weekly but uh, weekly it is at a support so uh, daily is bearish already and trend is also bearish so bearishness is there and there is no sign of consolidation that may be happening instead it is a trended down move is what we can see on the ultra tech segment and bajaj finance also so that can give some short term no one or two or three days of you no know, potential signals for down short trading right so that's it so wrap up basically the wrap up nothing has changed the price action did nothing but ended up at the same place so so the view market be also remain the same moderate bearishness in the short term for tomorrow is what i see because the charts are saying that it is you no know, support is looking at the chart patterns there is trend the bearish momentum the sideways downside expansion going to ban support resistance all of this tells me it is again not help but being bearish and um, yeah we had a good um, breakout which did not sustain and we had fallen back and now we have our rbi announcement that has uh, made the market jittery and uh, you no know, bearish has come in all of a sudden because rbi news also was also a surprise kind of move Uh, all of a sudden market it don't expect so it take some time to digest that probably so uh, if there is consolidation that is seen then you no know, probably it may be digesting that news so otherwise if bearishness continues then it's likely that it can go for the down to make another swing low so 7500 7500 is what you have to look out on nifty and bank nifty 16400 similarly don't say 34000 also bank nifty downside is what you have to clear it clearly keep a close watch so So there's a lot of uh, you no know, inflation and the Fed interest rate kind of news is there floating around. RBI, the our own uh, interest rate hike is there. Then um, global war still happening. So volatility has many reasons to remain above twenty and then you no know, spike up also. Right? So we have to be cautious. Our net positions has to be hedged whenever VIX is greater than twenty for sure, because otherwise our capital will get so get wiped out and then. So always use uh, risk-defined strategies option, non-directional or uh, current or spread, so vertical spread or whatever. Right. So FIX number, FIX are selling continuously. Also, so there is there is a lot of uncertainty that is still around. So when things can turn around overnight and then give surprises. So trade cautiously. If the which is spiking and um, maintaining the 20 plus levels, probably staying out may be the wise you know wise trade to do. Right. So moderate bearishness is my, my view. So I hope this helps you to frame your own view for the next day and, and make your own trade plan. So if that helps you in some way or the other, right? share it to maximum. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Like it. Put your comment, feedback, all all. And I appreciate your help in this regard because we we have very few subscriptions as of now. Right? So to keep us motivated to continue to do this, kindly subscribe and share to maximum. Right? Thanks a lot. Happy trading. Happy learning. Happy investing.